In this video, we are going to learn about what an ecological pyramid is and what are its different types. We will also learn about the basic functions as well as the limitations of the ecological pyramid. So let's begin with what an ecological pyramid is. It is basically a graphical representation that tells us the feeding patterns of organisms in different ecosystems. By the name, you can figure out that this graphical representation has to be in the shape of a pyramid. Each bar of the pyramid represents a different trophic level, which is based on who eats whom and how the energy flows or transfer from one organism to another. I'll give you a quick example of this pyramid. At the bottom of the pyramid, we have the primary producers. They are also called as autotrophs. These are basically plants, trees, algae, flowers. So all of this is placed at the bottom bar of the pyramid. Now on top of this bar, we have the primary consumers. These are herbivorous animals which feed on these plants. Animals like insects, squirrel, deer, rabbit, goat, etc. Now on top of this bar, we have the secondary consumers, which feed on the primary consumers. Secondary consumers consist of carnivorous animals like fox, snakes, wolves, crocodiles, eagles, etc. Like this, the bar of the pyramid continues to rise as long as there is an organism that eats another organism. Alright then, now that you understood what an ecological pyramid is, now we will understand the three types of ecological pyramids. The first one is the pyramid of energy. This type of pyramid describes the overall flow of the energy between one organism to another. It also shows us how inefficient energy transfer is or in other words, there is a considerable loss of energy in the form of heat. Let me show it to you by an illustration. So moments back I told you that at the bottom of the pyramid we have the primary producers. They are called as autotrophs. It consists of plants, trees, algae, etc. All these primary producers need sunlight as the primary source of energy. Hence, we can come to this conclusion that the amount of energy available to the primary producers is a lot. Just for learning purpose, I'm going to assign a value that represents the amount of energy that is available with the respective trophic levels. So the primary producers get their energy directly from the sun. Let's say 1000 kilocalories of energy is available with the producers. As per the law of nature, the primary consumers feed on the primary producers. And we know that they are herbivorous animals. During the flow of energy from primary producers to primary consumers, there is a substantial loss of energy in the form of heat. Now the primary consumers are left with 100 kilocalories of energy. Likewise, there are secondary consumers that feed on the primary consumers. Again, there is a transfer of energy from primary consumers to secondary consumers. Even now, there is a successive loss of energy. This way, at each trophic level, there is a continuous loss of energy in the form of heat and respiration. And in the end, if you look at this energy pyramid, it is always upright and vertical. In other words, the energy is minimum at the highest trophic level and the energy is maximum at the lowest trophic level. The second type of ecological pyramid is the pyramid of numbers. This shows the population of organisms in each trophic level. A trophic level is nothing but the individual bars or levels of the pyramid. One important thing to remember is that when we look at the pyramid of numbers, as we know, it's a graphical representation. So we do not consider the size of an individual organism. Rather, what we see is a pyramid where the bottom level has a maximum number of individuals in the form of producers. The producers support comparatively fewer number of herbivorous animals. Likewise, herbivorous animals support a fewer number of primary carnivores and so on. In the end, at the top, you will find the number of carnivorous animals who are also called the apex predator. They are always few in number. Again, the size of these individuals doesn't matter because we have apex predator in the form of a lion, then we also have it in the form of an eagle, and in the sea we have in the form of a killer whale. So the size doesn't matter, but the population or the number is usually less and that is what matters. And that's what this pyramid is all about. So the pyramid of number is an upright vertical pyramid, just like the pyramid of energy. The third type of ecological pyramid is the pyramid of biomass. Biomass means the total quantity or weight of organisms in a given area or volume. Usually this type of pyramid is largest at the bottom 
and get smaller going up. In other words, the larger net biomass of producers support a smaller weight of consumers. But exceptions do exist. For example, in an aquatic ecosystem, the smaller weight of producers support consumers of larger weight. What we just saw is that the pyramid of biomass is of two types. It is an upright as well as an inverted pyramid. Now this type of ecological pyramid solves some problems of the pyramid of numbers as it shows a more accurate representation of the amount of energy contained in each trophic level. But it has its own limitations. For example, the time of the year when the data are gathered is very important, since different species have different breeding seasons. Also, since it's usually impossible to measure the mass of every single organism, we only take samples. That means there's a possibility of inaccuracies. So these were the three types of ecological pyramids. As I've said, an ecological pyramid shows us the feeding patterns of organisms in different ecosystems. And it also gives us an insight into how energy is inefficiently transferred from one organism to another. Therefore, it absolutely makes sense to study the changes that take place in the environment by comparing data. And that is what the whole purpose as well as the function is behind knowing the ecological pyramid. But as usual, there are also some limitations. One of the biggest assumptions of the ecological pyramid is that the food chain is very simple, but in reality it is not. Instead, we have food chains and then we also have a food web. I have a video that will tell you the difference between a food chain and a food web. I recommend that you watch that video and you will get what I mean. Another limitation of this form of ecological pyramid is that, if you notice, the ecological pyramid consists of producers, herbivorous animals, then carnivorous animals. But then it has no place for detrivores and decomposers. Their role is to break down the dead plants and animals and pass the essential nutrients. And that's what makes them the most important part of any ecosystem. However, the ecological pyramid has no method of accommodating these vital microorganisms. So these are some of the limitations. I also hope you understood what an ecological pyramid is and also the reasons behind having different types of ecological pyramids. That's the end of this video. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. As usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.